I think it's really interesting that Anna talked about the whole world and open data in general, and you talk about also actually the whole world but from a very sort of personal and, and individual um, perspective. But both of you, you talk about the citizen and the usefulness of data from a citizen perspective that governments can actually give citizens, um, the, the empower citizens to know what's going on and then to help influence uh, decisions. And also you're talking about not just data protection, but data empowerment, that citizens sh should be empowered to do things with their data and control their data. And you, you both talked about the usefulness. I was, I was thinking, how about the effort required to get involved? Because I think most people, if you ask them, they want to get involved. But are you sure that that could not be uh, at least part of the problem why some um, governments are struggling, that maybe citizens don't really want to, to do the, the work? Or have you encountered problems that people say, well, I'm not sure I want to take responsibility for my data, or mm. I don't know what to do with it. Do you think all citizens would, would even want it? Could that no. be a valid argument? That I don't think that all citizens want it, and that's big. Uh, if you give uh, 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 rights, you give also responsibilities, and do we want to uh, put everybody be responsible of mm. over their own data? So the protection is needed, and uh, I think that um, there could be some sort of tools like, um, let's say, your own personal privacy agents or something like that, that you generally you express your thoughts that how you would in general want to do, uh, deal with your data and then the actual day-to-day -day transactions with different digital services, it happens automatically. And uh, only then when somebody, some service needs, uh, if I, for example, say that I don't generally want my data to be used for marketing purposes and if there is comes an app that needs uh, my data for marketing purposes, then there comes some flag up and are you really sure that you want to do it? So not so that I need to preemptively uh, try to learn everything what uh, different uh, apps are doing. So really having some practical tools for mm. there. And this could be done uh, in with government and companies together, uh, like recreating the rules that what kind of, how to create these personal assistance, for example. Right. And Anna, do you think that maybe the uh, Nordic countries have lost their, uh, citizens have lost their appetite for open data? Is that why? They're not pushing anymore? As a non-Nordic country representative, <laughs> I can't directly answer that. But I don't necessarily think it's about disinterest from the citizen. I just think that we are still a niche community. I mean, it, talking to journalists and media, but also the way we talk, uh, the language we use, right? So we talked about language a lot in our workshop yesterday. Uh, and it, it, it can be problematic. That's why I take it back to access to information, to just knowledge, sharing knowledge. Uh, you, you have to make it m more than just about open data and those words uh, to the larger public, like uh, OGP, uh, SDGs. Like when you start getting into acronym, you just start losing the larger public. So uh, I don't think we're even there yet to have full engagement that every citizen even knows what we are doing to even then make a decision or like, oh yes, we're interested in this, is this or this is not something we want to be a part of. So I just think there's just uh, capacity and engagement is a long-term thing and it takes a lot of energy and time and strategy. So you just need to uh, keep having consultations, open forums, uh, put the stuff on social media, wherever, wherever the people are. And then of course, like the younger generations aren't on Facebook, on Twitter. So like you want to get innovative and use this, like Snapchat or Instagram. I don't know. So it's, it's just, um, uh, it's, the point is it's, we have to adapt to mediums communication mediums that work for more citizens and also offline methods as well as online. So I think that's really key so we don't uh, miss anyone uh, in, 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 a, like a, in Denmark or which, whichever country, the citizens who might not access Yeah, because you just, you just said it and that was kind of um, an interesting thing, not missing anyone. You're both talking about empowerment from 
maybe different perspectives, but still citizen empowerment. But yet today, we've heard so many um, people highlight the tendency that every time we use new technology, we always believe that this is really going to be uh, the big game changer. It's going to change the world for the better. But actually, it, it tends to just reinforce the mechanisms and the, the differences that we already have. How about the digital divide from a uh, open data uh, perspective and also from a I want to control my own data? perspective what about those who may not be able to engage in this are they going to simply be left behind the more we do for those who actually can and will I think uh, I'm maybe repeating myself but uh, it's completely illusion that um, even most people would be highly interested in either open data or either controlling their personal data or anything like that so uh, there, there is the real uh, need for regulation that something just are put into the law and, and uh, there is enough people that have, have the discussion w what should be good and uh, also, of course, democratic methods, but we uh, uh, should not expect that it's like everybody is involved in this discussion or highly interested in. So it goes then uh, for wider group of people through the... Uh, practical use and uh, somebody said that uh, when we speak about innovation or new new discoveries it's uh, often the, uh, we have this cult, cult of uh, the superhero inventor that did something like uh, uh, Edison and, and light bulbs uh, something like that or Graham Bell and phone but uh, the innovation really happens over really long time when it gets into use so the phone uh, was uh, when it was invented the, the use cases were like okay we can uh, distribute the church masses on on over distance for people on sundays and then suddenly it started to be that people are calling from uh, house to house housewives actually started to call their neighbors and they invented what we uh, nowadays uh, think that it's normal to talk over phone to uh, other people and that was not part of the original invention and it happened like maybe uh, over 20 years time what, uh, wh when we socialized the new technology. So that's really an I important to understand that it's no single moment that defines an invention. So what do you think about the digital divide you're talking about I think, democracy. I think a lot of things, <laughs> but I, I can't cover them all now. Uh, but I would say that first, like we do have the risk of empowering the empowered, as Michael Gerstein said a few years back in one of the early papers on open data in First Monday. And that's still the case, but that's just because of the rules that are at play everywhere. And people have to play the game and you become corrupt to just feed your family or whatever in the process, because that's what you're given. So. Uh, that's in a more extreme case. But with the digital divide, I think it's about um, inclusion. Uh, we talk about inclusion, empowerment, giving the voice to the voiceless. And those words make me uncomfortable sometimes uh, because we don't have those uh, groups represented here. Mm -hmm. They're not a part of the conversation. Sometimes you have uh, different representatives uh, from the global south involved in international conferences, but they also don't represent the very poor in their own communities and countries. So it's a matter of uh, if we will do initiatives that uh, are for everyone or we want to really leave no one behind, we have to make sure those are followed up and the projects get sustainable and implemented over time. And you do a lot of the on the ground, unsexy work of just being in the community, hearing no, adapting and making sure that uh, what you're discussing on, on access, on connectivity, can be connected to uh, this open data world, which is sometimes says, like, well, that's a bridge too far. Like, the digital connectivity people are dealing with here, like, we're just open data, we're, we want our CSV and JSON. And it's like, no, no, you can't be different worlds. You kind of have to be together to make sure uh, we, we create, a, a, like, sort of, in a cheesy way, a better world together in terms of tech and availability of information and, and data, right? So. Uh, it's it's complex, obviously, but we also have to acknowledge our shortcomings and then like learning to see how we can do better uh, ourselves at uh, real inclusion. 
So like I, I have to just celebrate this internet dagarna for at least having some sort of gender balance here on the stage. I was surprised because normally these uh, tech conferences are really, really dominated by by uh, male speakers. So I think it was more or less 50-50 today, at least here on the main stage. But yeah, anyways, uh, that's uh, s there are still many other uh, balances that we need to <laughs> strive for. And it seems that you, you both say that it's going to require effort and time. We shouldn't perhaps despair. And a change just in mentality. Like mm. it's just, you have to change your mindset around who, and knowing that again, like not siloing the gender things and having women work on the women things. It's like, no, no, we can do data and gender in one. We can make data available for specific groups and for everyone in between. It doesn't have to be a bunch of dudes working on tech and building and programming together, and then that's that, right? So we have to get away from exclusive clubs <laughs> in everywhere, like from the big companies to the cool new startups. Yeah, actually, practically, I think uh, the open data movement, what it gave for me, I, I was really active and now I've been more or less following it from distance a couple of years, but uh, the, this uh, very positive openness uh, experiences that when you just uh, raise your flag and say that let's do this and you don't know who might come, but people come and those who come, they really uh, uh, create uh, really good uh, things and uh, not being exclusive that pinpointing that I want to have these super experts on this topic and I choose you and you and you and then let's uh, change the world but uh, even just uh, of course that's not that's kind of passive openness uh, it doesn't reach to everybody all over the places but that's one step uh, b uh, further than being the choose, let's create the expert group that solves the problem of uh, whatever it is, uh, to solve it in an open manner and uh, let's see who comes and they probably are somewhat interested in the topic and can bring very much new uh, thoughts. I learn every day something new on personal data just because uh, somebody comes to talk me after this kind of presentations. And I guess it's same for you. Well, I think maybe that's uh, the perfect place to say uh, thank you very much. And I hope you all noticed that um, every speaker here today actually um, encouraged you to engage, to, to get in touch with them, to ask questions. Um, later on today, um, there will be the opportunity to do a lot of networking. I don't know if you guys are going to, to hang around for that, but in, sure. in that case, I hope that you all want to keep this conversation going and uh, that you will um, engage with all the uh, people we've heard from today. It's been really, really interesting. I think looking over the program before we, we began, I was amazed at the diversity and it still turns out that we're talking about the same same challenges and I hope that we really have some kind, kind of cross-pollination going on here so that people talking about personal data can, can learn from a, a very sort of broad overview of what's going on across the world and when you talk to, to governments and try to encourage them to, to move up the ranks you can perhaps learn some, something from the ideas of like activists, also the activists you speak to across the world. And I hope that you have all been ex um, inspired as well and that you will share your in inspiration and your experience with people online, but also especially the people who are here today. Thank you very much. It's been very exciting to, to be here and I definitely learned a lot. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.